Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Love This Reptiles, and we are going to show you some of our holdbacks. We're going to break these videos up into chunks so they're easy to digest and not super long. And we're going to try to show you about five snakes uh, uh, per video, and then eventually we'll show you the ones we added that we didn't hold back that we got from outside as well. The point of this is to let you kind of see where our future is going. And then what we'll do is we'll slide over to Patreon and make sure to like, subscribe, and click that Patreon link if you would, and at least check it out. There's even a free trial if you want. And we'll tell you what our plans kind of loosely are with each one of these or why we chose that animal to be a hold back. Capiche? All right, if we're ready, Caleb, bring on the first. Do, 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 do. Dude, that's an old Tom, uh, Tom T. Hall song right there for those who are wondering. Oh, God. What the hell we got here? So, it is... Female, I do believe. Pastel spider yellow belly possible fire exanthic. So we don't know if the fire's in there. So it's basically, a, it's a zebra bee uh, with the yellow belly. You can see the yellow belly through here. Look at all that. Right through there is where it's telling you it's in there. Uh, this is obviously something I'm into. You know, I'll go ahead and... Look under the hood for you on this one. Boop. See, it's a little girl. So this is a really good looking snake. Now, yes, it does have spider in it. I know that's going to be a turn off for some people. And, well, frankly, I have zero fucks to give about that. The reason for that is because this is one of the first things I fell in love with were these animals right here. So I really like my spider and my exanthic, and I tend to continue to do that. Um, as you can see, as this thing crawls, it does fine. It eats on its own. It moves well. Nope, no falling off the table, buddy. Um, it's a really pretty snake. The yellow belly shall keep this thing really nice and clean, even if the fire proves not to be in there, which at this point, as it's aged, I'm not feeling real great about her, you? Caleb's in agreement. But I am feeling really good about the spider, the pastel, the exanthic, and the yellow belly. Either way, still a really dang good female. All right, I'll give you that one back. And we'll get the next one. Um, and so, two, we'll talk on Patreon a little bit about our process as we choose. Sometimes choosing, we'll talk about that here. We'll talk about each snake individually on Patreon. Sometimes the process of choosing is just simply the genes we're looking for to move a project forward. Other times, you're going to have multiples of what you want. And that's when that choosing gets a little bit more difficult. And there are certain ways to go about it. Oh, this thing looks happy to see me. And let me guess here, another exanthic. Yep. Another female. Yep. Another pastel. Yep. No spider, guys. This has got pinstripe. So this is a lemon blast exanthic. Uh, this is a really cool snake. I really like these. Um, we worked a long time to produce this. You know, it was something that has been in the works for quite a while. Uh, we purchased a chance at doing this a long time ago that didn't didn't go so well for us. So when my hubris got in the way and I bought a snake that I knew was a non-feeder and I thought I could get it going and get it rolling and get it started. And, well, I was wrong. And so then I had to purchase a pinstripe exantic again from somebody who I trusted a lot more. Uh, and that thing was awesome. A great, uh, so this bloodline here is going to come from our killer zebra bee male, which was produced by JD Constriction and John Dog. Uh, we're real heavy on the Johns here. Our pinstripe exanthic was produced by John Stoltz at Tails and Scales. Well, formerly of Tails and Scales. That is no longer his shop, I don't believe, right? Correct. He is retired. Uh, he retired from the, the physical reptile shop, is still involved in the breeding process with a lot of animals, and produces some very fine exanthics. So we combined two different people's bloodline to get this, uh, and I'm really, really, really happy with it. It needs one more pastel copy to really lighten it up further. And believe it or not, a spider copy goes a long ways in these. We have one with spider, so we can see what it does. But unfortunately, it was a male, so we did not keep it. I'll send this girl back with you. But we had to diversify our exanthic, right? Because I just told you how much I love spider in my exanthic, and that is very true. But I can't have everything have spider in it. As a matter of fact, at this point, spider females become a little bit problematic because I got it pretty heavy on the male side. Uh, we do have some ways around that where we need visual females to get some new genes in from some head males we're raising up, which we'll talk about on Patreon. Up next is... Oh, hot diggity damn. I know what this is. So this, correct me if I'm wrong, is the part of the, the, part of the project, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at here is 
We've talked long and hard about the Hellfire project. This is part of that. Where this is a, it's this is the animal that eventually will prove if it's well one of them that will prove if it's going to be another line of pastel or not because this has pastel in it. It also has whatever the Hellfire is in it. Now, when you look at this animal, you will see a, a nice blushed head. That would be pretty consistent with what we would expect to see in a super pastel, which would push you to believe, hey, more likely another line of pastel. You're also going to see the color on the animal, and that color being very, very bright, very, very nice, uh, does is pretty consistent with what I would expect to see in a super pastel. So that would also push to the line of pastel. The one thing, there you go, little one, when you look, is the back blushing, or lack thereof. Super pastels tend to be extremely blushed out along the back. We have here and here, and that is it. Now, uh, is that just because there's not really a lot of back pattern because it's really, really wonky? Possibly. Uh, so it doesn't really say what's going on for sure, but it's leading us to some of those answers. So, really cool snake. Give you that one back. So anyway, those, there's a lot of the Hellfire project in the holdback because we have to kind of keep that till we know what's going on with it. And then once we know for sure whether it's just a new line of pastel, at which point we'll just call it that and move on with our day. Or it's new, that's kind of what we have to do to kind of work that project. Uh, next up is an angry little monkey. And what we have here, you've been burying yourself. How come you're a jerk and the rest of them are very nice? Because it's the holdback. Always the holdback. This is a short tail or blood python. Uh, it is an ivory, so it's a super matrix, would be the best way to describe that. And I really like it. We didn't think we'd hit any, but here it is. You can see the white along the sides. That's a telltale sign of the ivories on these. And look at that tail turn solid white as well. So this is a really, really, really cool snake. This is a uh, normal for comparison. That's a normal non-matrix? Well, matrix, sorry. Oh, matrix. Normal matrix, so. And we have some straight normals too, don't we? Yes, we yeah. do. Uh, so we're going to get all the blood pythons out. This is like a mini blood python clutch update video. So here you go. This is normal. This is Matrix. That is an ivory. Hope my song helps you remember it won't me. Uh, but the funny thing is our adults, there's, there's about that much variation in the color in our adults. That's why we were kind of surprised. Well, two of us were. Kurt always had the faith when we hit the ivory. We did only get one. Uh, but one is enough to prove that they're both matrixes. So, there it is. Also possible head albino. It is possible head albino. When they put their heads up like that, that's when you got to just make sure that they're being kind of chill. There it is. Uh, the other cool thing I want to point out with blood pythons is, as you can see, blood pythons are notorious for being little jerk faces and having a big asshole complex. They're all pretty docile. Um, Part of that is captive breeding, right? They're not first generation captive bred. There are multiple generations in now. And as long as they're worked with frequently, which we're not going to keep most of them but that one. But if somebody were to buy them and keep them and work with them, you'd probably have a pretty gentle, pretty nice blood python, to be honest. And this is kind of the coup de gras of this video. Uh, now, this is our full blown. <laughs> oh, you feel so cool. I missed you while I was gone. It's full blown scaleless. Uh, pin. So it does have a little bit of shed on it, not too much. And I wanted to show it that way because a lot of people won't. I mean, there's still a lot of learning going on with these guys and how best to do it. It is eating on its own. Even with that, the eye caps are clear. We did start with this animal on our traditional coconut we always use, which is a fine shaved coconut from Reptile Prime. And I really like that coconut. It is not appropriate for these. I will tell you straight up, we've had to switch that out. We tried paper towels. Is that where, are we back to coconut with the thicker stuff? Using the blocks. We're using the cocoa blocks for these. The reason the prime was not appropriate, and that would mean I would not keep these on any kind of reptile dirt or whatnot, is because it tends to get stuck along its mouth and face. Um, without the scalation, it's just kind of a thing that happens. It's and very it's not, suction y cut feeling. Yes, yeah, almost like an octopus tentacle. It does. You know, would be the best way to describe it. I know I've described it as a male piece of genitalia before on my Western Diamond back. And that may be accurate when they get larger. But here, without the belly scales, it almost does feel like it sticks to you with that bottom, which is where that suction cup or octopus tentacle kind of comes from. 
you know, you can see right there, it did get all the scale off of its belly. And the problem is it's paper thin, so it's really hard to get off. We have done a little bit of soaking. We have to do some other things. The problem comes in, you don't want to overdo that because these things are susceptible to skin infection. So we have to be very careful. It may just be the next type of shed. I, I do think we're going to run a moist and a dry tub and switch back that. and forth between the two when the time comes. But this is going to be a better substrate than the coconut we were using. We were having to clean this thing's out, mouth out frequently, which is very stressful for it and can... Obviously, if you overstress a baby, you're going to cause it to die. So we didn't want to have to keep doing that. But it's doing really well. Ate this week for us again. Yeah. It did skip about two weeks because of we were working on his mouth and doing all that. And um, the switch, though, I think really helped it. And you can see it's pretty active. Okay, little buddy. Yeah, let me get you off that watch. <laughs> there you are, little one. Really cool snake, though. Is that the last one? All right, guys, that is five of our holdbacks. There are more of these videos to come. And just so we can get a quick recap, you had one different species with the short tail slash blood python. You had one full-blown scaleless, right? You had one new project we're working into this video already with the possible hellfire stuff, as you see that aging out, and two visual recessive with exanthix, all of which had multiple genes in it. So that should give you some idea where we're headed in the future. Any questions, Kurt? No. Nope. Any questions, Caleb? Negative. Stay tuned for more of our holdback videos because we have a, we'll probably have, I don't know, somewhere between 12 to 18 holdbacks this year, and there's probably three or four additions, five that we added from other sources. I had to guess. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.